Hi, I'm Chad, and this is a sample video tutorial from my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks! If you're following along with the InDesign support file, you probably noticed this hexagon pattern here, this honeycomb pattern. I just created that really quickly in Illustrator, and then I just copy and paste it over. So it's an editable file here, even in InDesign, although we wouldn't want to adjust those individually if we want a uniform look. It's also up here on the edge there. So how did I make that? Well, this exercise is a fun way to show how we can create patterns in Illustrator and then bring them into InDesign as backgrounds or different design elements like this. So go ahead and go to Illustrator and open up a new document. I'm just going to do letter size, landscape orientation for this one. Just do one artboard and click Create. And so first we need to draw that shape that we have there. So if we click on the rectangle tool on the tools panel and go to the polygon tool, and if I click and drag, right now it's already a hexagon. If it's not, if it's something lower or more, just press up and down keys on the keyboard until we get a hexagon like that with six sides. Hold shift so it's level, and we'll just draw something like that. And so now we need to set it to some kind of color. So I'll set this to some kind of blue for now. We can change it later. And then for the stroke, for this example, let's have none. So I'll just click that and click the none icon right below there. And so we have our shape here. The problem is we need to turn it. So let's hover off the corner here with the selection tool. We can click and drag and hold shift so it goes to those specific intervals, 90 degrees there. And so now it's sideways. Now we have it at the right orientation that we want it. And now we can use object transform transform, but I'm going to do that in the next example. In the first one, I'll show a much quicker way where we don't need to adjust other settings of the shape. So we can just hold Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and click and drag this over. And we can either use those smart guides to keep it level so it's not barely unaligned or hold shift either way. I'm gonna do something like that. And without deselecting this, press Control D or Command D on the Mac. And we'll just do that a couple times like that. All right, so now with the selection tool up here, we click and drag around all of that. And then now we hold Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. And instead of just duplicating one, we're duplicating an entire row. So click and drag that, but instead of bringing it just down, unless that's the look we wanted, we want to bring it over a little bit, something like that. Now if I click off here and just make sure everything looks to be the same distance in between, looks good. All right, so now let's click and drag around both of these. And then I'll click and drag this down. And if it's doing that where it's locking into just that intersection part right there, kind of at the halfway point of the Illustrator file, if we don't want that, we can just go to View and then uncheck Smart Guides. So now, if I click and drag it down, it won't do that. So something like that. And we can also turn that back on after the fact if we want with Smart Guides. So I click and drag around all those, and then Alt, click and drag again. And we want that right there. So now we have a pattern and we can click and drag around all of this and copy and paste it into InDesign or we can save it as an Illustrator file and place it and that's that honeycomb pattern. Now another way to create a pattern is a little bit simpler in terms of the base shape here. So I'm just going to click and drag with the ellipse tool here and make a circle. And so I could do the same thing. I could Alt, click and drag and hold Shift if we need to. And with this still selected, press Control or Command D and just do that over and over and over. And in this one, we don't need to adjust it like we did with the honeycomb pattern. We can just Alt, click and drag down, hold Shift, and then press Control D. All right, and then we have a pattern. So we can use that, or if we know a specific interval that we want to use or we want to adjust these shapes, we can use this transform again, specifically the transform each command. So with that selected, we can go to Object, Transform, Transform Each. I learned this technique at an advertising design firm I worked at. 
it's pretty neat. So what you can do is you can scale things either, you know, we can make them smaller for each step. You can move them over a certain amount and you can rotate them, which wouldn't matter here because it's a circle. So for example, I'll just do a different kind of shape here. I'll do a star. Let's say we had that and we go to object, transform, transform each. And then let's say we rotate it, say 30 degrees each time, and then moving it is important. So we want to move it, say about 40 points over that way each time. And to keep it simple, we could just keep it at 100%. We want to press copy, not OK, because if we press OK, it'll just move it over there. It's just transforming it. If I press copy, and then I press Control or Command D, it will repeat the same effects, but to the current one that's selected. So it's just rotating it and moving it over a certain amount over. So then I could click and drag around that, Alt, click and drag, if we want to add another row and so on. So that's another type of pattern. Instead of them all being the same shape, we can rotate them, resize them as we move them. So I will use the ellipse tool here though, and I'll click and drag again. And the fast way again is Alt or Option, click and drag, and then Control or Command D while it's selected. And then we want to click and drag around all this, Alt, click and drag, and then Control or Command D. So we have a nice pattern here to use. And what we want to do in this method, we could copy and paste it into InDesign, and we'd have a pattern like that to use for a background or some other kind of design element. But we can also use this in Photoshop first. So I have it here copied into the clipboard. Let's open up water.jpg from the support files in Photoshop. And let's go to Edit Paste. And this is important. We don't want to paste it as a smart object because then if we change it, the source of it, it will then change here. So let's just place it as pixels. Press OK. And so before we place this, I want to click and drag off that corner there to rotate it and I hold shift so it's perfectly level and I want to make this a little bit larger here so we have more of the surrounding there something like that and we'll press enter and then that places it and this background layer we can't click and drag above the other layer and that's problematic because for this effect it's clipping mask we need to be able to do that so we need to just double click on this background layer to name it layer zero and then now I can click and drag it above the layer one. And here's the clipping mask effect. In the layers panel in Photoshop, if you don't have that, again, window, then layers, with the photo on the top, and then this pattern we just created on the bottom, hold Alt on the PC and Option on the Mac, and hover the cursor between the two, and then click. So while you're holding Alt or Option, we need to click in between those two. And so it adds this clipping mask effect, but we want her to pop through. So what we can do with this bottom layer still selected, this layer one, we can go to the brush tool right here in the tools panel. We want a soft edge brush for the edge. So up here, make sure hardness is set to 0%. And you can change the size of the brush as well right here, or you can press the left and right bracket like that. And if you have caps lock on, it'll look like that. So we want to press caps lock again. Make sure that's off so that we can see the edge of the brush. So we'll just paint some black in here. And it will have her pop out through that pattern. And so it's masking out a part of the photo there in the background. But we want her to pop through. So I'm just clicking and dragging to paint some black here so that she pops through with the camera there. And we could add a new layer, click the create a new layer icon on the bottom of the layers panel. We'll bring that to the bottom and then we could fill it some kind of color in the background. Press Alt Backspace or Option Delete and that will fill the background. And we could save that as a PSD to place into InDesign. Or we could just have this if we wanted the background of the InDesign area. For example, the page has a rectangle in the background, then we could have that be the background. Place this as a partially transparent PSD. So I closed and opened water.jpg again. I want to show you the same type of technique, but sometimes you might see that we need the pattern to be a little bit smaller. So I'll click and drag the corner there, and then Alt click and drag. So we're duplicating it. So now we have more like that. It's really easy to duplicate these. 
click and drag around all these. Alt, click and drag, Alt Shift to keep that aligned. And then now we can click and drag around all of this back in Illustrator, edit, copy. And then in Photoshop, we can go to edit, paste as pixels. And I'm just going to make this a bit larger here. Something like that. And so then we can place it by pressing enter or return. And instead of the other technique, we can actually just add a mask to this. So add a layer mask right here. And then we want to make sure the foreground is set to black for this example. And we can just paint in some black so that she'll pop through. It has a different effect though because this area is just covering up the background instead of partially masking it out through a clipping mask. So if I paint so that she comes through like that. And if we ever mess up on this masking technique, for example, if I went too far, if I went like that, we can flip these and make sure the foreground is set to white and we can paint white to bring those pixels back in. This non-destructive editing, kind of, it's basically non-destructive erasing in a way. So then we could change the blending mode of this part here. We go to multiply. That's a cool effect as well. Or we could go to lighten or screen. It will make it lighter. Either way, we can then crop it down to that area if we want. So something like this. And once we have that area, we can just double click inside here. And we can save this as a PSD, definitely. So we have all our information. So I'll save this as water pattern masking.psd. Then in InDesign, of course, we can lay it out. So let's just say we were on this page here. So we'll go to File Place. And then this one is Water Pattern Masking. And we can just click and drag this in here and add it to our layout. So those are some ways to add patterns in Illustrator. And then we can just copy and paste them in like these examples that are already in there. Or we can place them into Photoshop and add some effect to a raster image, a photo, save it as a PSD, and then place it into InDesign as well. Hi, I'm Chad, and this is a sample video tutorial from my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks.